Sculptor based in Brooklyn, and I'm here to talk a little bit about my work, my process, and my latest project, Refined, which is actually in Central Pavilion. So if you have questions later on, come visit me and we'll talk about it. So I didn't start as a kinetic sculptor. I started as an animator. So my process was primarily in old school technologies like 16 millimeter frame by frame hand drawn animation, 16 millimeter frame by frame claymation, and so having to build all of my own set pieces, having to build all of my own characters. And even in here, starts to see the beginnings of the kinetic sculpture part. This is Sisyphus. He's a, he's a clay figure. And in order for him to push that boulder up the hill, I had to counterweight the boulder over the top of the mountain. So already starting to see in my work some basic physics principles coming in. Uh, this is my first major project at ITP. I'm an alumni from ITP at NYU. Um, so rather than buying a bubble machine, I set out for myself to build a bubble machine with motors, with an Arduino, with fans. Um, so rather than taking the easy way and just buying and hacking a bubble machine, I, I decided to build my own. So inside of this bubble machine, uh, you would push the button. It would record your voice. And then when you blew through the microphone in the top of that bubble wand, real bubbles would come out. There was a camera tracking on the ceiling so that as those bubbles floated towards the ceiling, they would pop. I would know that you, your bubble had popped, quote unquote, and speakers would play out your voice. So I was recording people playing what thoughts they thought of when they saw bubbles, and then their voice would emanate from those bubbles. Um, the following semester, I took this amazing class called Mechanisms and Things That Move. It's kind of an intro to mechanical engineering for non-engineers. Um, I like to refer to myself nowadays as a pretend-engineer, just kind of making it up as I go along. Uh, so building paper prototypes of kind of more advanced motions. Uh, and for my midterm project, instead of uh, I built all of my own kind of mechanical com components out of scrap wood around the shop. So as I turned that handle, I was able to get a lot of different types of motion, spinning, uh, up and down, uh, rectilinear, back and forth motion. Uh, most of these projects have video online. There's not enough time during the talk to show the video. Um, but if you go to my portfolio, there's a lot of that stuff available online. Uh, the final for that, for that class is really when I got into the digital fabrication. That is using laser cutters, using CNC, to finally make precise engineered mechanical components to create these kind of these elaborate motions. So this is an animated wooden circus. There are little tiny audience members that would travel around that rubber belt, trigger limit switches, which would trigger the various circus acts. So the audience members could watch the circus acts as they passed around. From there, uh, I moved on to a bicycle project. This is called Cycle. This actually showed at Maker Fair last year. Um, the user would climb onto the bicycle, pedal, and on the other side of a curtain was a gigantic foam wheel. As they pedaled, that foam wheel would spin past a camera, the same way that old school model making would spin the camera past the models. And that image from the camera would show up on the screen. So the experience of riding this bicycle gave you this feeling of motion, even though it was all just little tiny like model trees and model railroad type things. So there's a nice picture of it. Uh, you, you could actually pedal the bike, spin the bike up. Well, one minor flaw in this project is that the wheel didn't have a brake, so you could get the wheel to spin faster than you were pedaling. There's a little bit of motion sickness there. Um, from there, I moved on to building clocks. It's, it's always been a, a passion. I've, I've always been paying attention to mechanical clocks. I've always wanted to build a clock. So for my final project at ITP, I set out to build the picture on the right. Uh, starting with the escapement. If you're not aware, the escapement in a clock is the part that actually keeps time. Um, rather than going with some sort of uh, electrical motor, I wanted to have my escapement spring-powered, so going back to older technology. Um, here are some pictures of where I got to in that project. You can see the escapement is on the left side picture. So as the escapement, as the, the spring unwinds, it forces that large spiky gear to turn, pushing the pendulum back and forth slowly. 
So that's actually what keeps time in a grandfather clock. And just using some basic laser cutting, some uh, designs in Adobe Illustrator and Vectorworks, I was able to reappropriate those kind of old mechanical motions into my own techno into my own projects. That's really what a lot of my work is about, trying to figure out how to recreate things that we've already discovered in new materials um, and in new scales. Um, this is just a close-up of that spring barrel. So in the, like, the last 72 hours before my thesis presentation, I knew that in order for my project to be successful for myself, I needed to make it spring-powered. So I pulled a couple all-nighters, I talked to some experts in the field, and was able to design my own, design and fabricate my own spring barrel. So as you spun that spring barrel, it would wind up a metal spring, uh, unwind slowly over the course of the day. Um, from there, I went on to less gear-based pursuits. This is a miniature golf hole based on conveyor belt sushi, starring my good friend Finn. Finn is a uh, sushi chef. Uh, he got pretty nasty with that uh, that knife. But the thing about this project that's different from the previous projects is I had never done an outdoor weather project before. It's a different ball game when you're supposed to build some, something that lasts, that you build something in 10 days that lasts two months for the first time. Uh, Finn didn't quite make it all the way through, so he is no longer existing, but uh, I'm waiting for Finn to. Uh, from there, I moved on to back to the gears. Uh, this is a project called the Time Machine. This showed at uh, Playtime New York, which is a designer baby trade show, uh, showing designer baby clothes based in uh, New York, Tokyo, and Paris. Um, for this project, I was able to CNC gigantic gears. They were almost four feet in diameter. Put them together on the floor as you see fit. So as over the life of the project, you could actually move the gears around uh, and change the motion. There's a little bit better picture of it. Also, I did all of the uh, my uh, all of the electrical wiring on this, and if you see in the window there, that's actually the calendar. So just like in Back to the Future, the calendar spins really quickly one direction, turns around, spins really quickly the other. On to the project that I'm showing here. Refined is the name of the project. Um, it's a uh, creative recreation of a sugar refinery made out of refined sugar. Um, I laser cut and 3D printed my own plastic pieces, casted them in rubber. Uh, these nice acrylic and hot glued boxes were wonderful. I was able to take the walls off the boxes, pull the molds out, um, and then into that, make my own hard candy recipe. Um, it's mostly sugar. There's a little bit of corn syrup and water. Boil that to just under 300 degrees or so. And then taking these are the, the laser cut parts into the mold and creating these kind of nice. So of course, this nice plastic we have we have defined edges. Everything fits together nicely. Doesn't work out quite as well with sugar. Um, but I did get to spend the past month or so hanging out in my kitchen making candy and lighting fires. So this is kind of like the ideal kids project, right? Um, so the, the goal is for this project to live on. I wanted to make it a full sugar refinery. The mechanical, so in sugar refining, you take brown sugar and turn it into the white table sugar we all know about. Um, I'm trying to recreate the mechanical steps. It's, there's a lot of chemical process that I can't do, but trying to recreate the mechanical steps um, in sugar, which will slowly grind itself away. Uh, I am inside working, on, working and showcasing this project. Um, so you are welcome to come in and check it out. A lot of my, like I said, a lot of my process is looking at good examples, uh, 507 mechanical motions, other examples online of historically tested machines and figuring out how to turn them into cardboard, sugar, plastic, wood. That's it. Anyone have any questions? Oof. It's a lot of information in a short time. <laughs> yeah, so if you do have questions or you want to come talk to me, I'll be inside in the Central Pavilion. Thank you. <laughs>